This next one was sent to cornydrafter at gmail.com from Jeff in Livermore, California. He found a list of the richest wrestlers of all time, and he wants to get your opinion on the list. Okay. It's a long list. We're not going to read this whole list. A here. long list. How? I didn't know there were that many rich wrestlers. Well, the number one richest wrestler of all time, Vince McMahon, worth $1.6 billion. Well, yeah, and, and I, I get he's a person who has wrestled. Would you identify Vince first and foremost as a wrestler? That's kind of a no. loophole there. And in that case, you know, then I could also be uh, categorized as a, uh, a a media mogul and a wrestler as well, because I have actually wrestled. But you know, I'm right now. I'm doing this. Number two, The Rock, worth four hundred million dollars. That's probably a safe um, a safe benchmark. I don't know any of the other boys going to hit four hundred million anytime soon. Number three is Triple H, worth $150 million. I mean, you know, <laughs> Stop. Where, where are we getting these uh, estimates from? Is this from Forbes magazine or some knowledgeable source, or is this just off Facebook? It appears to be from CelebrityNetWorth.com. Oh, well, I've looked mine up. And they're several million off. I ain't going to tell you in which direction, but I kind of was somewhat insulted. But that, no, I have i don't believe any of these. Now, in without taking the figures into, a, into the equation and just the ranking, I'm pretty sure Vince has more money than anybody else in the wrestling business. And I'm pretty sure The Rock would be number two. From that, you know, do we know what's going on with old Antonio Inoki these days? Because, I mean, was he, did he ever get up into the hundreds of millions? I don't know. I mean, Baba was the one people talked about more when it came to building wealth. Than That's Inoki. right. Baba may, may have had, Inoki, Inoki was like Barnett. He looked like he had a lot of money, but we, Baba actually had it, right? The real estate and purchasing things in Hawaii and all that shit. But I, I always heard that that he was at least in the, in the running for something like that. More money than anybody in the American wrestling business at that time had, and that was before Vince became a publicly traded billionaire. Number four, John Cena, worth $60 million. Well, I mean, you know, I can't argue with that because he's made major motion pictures and sitcoms, but again, where, where, where would Anoki and Baba fall in that? And some of the uh well what other promoter can we think through history probably not not got there such an interesting list i wonder what some of the wrestlers think about this list number five steve austin worth 30 million dollars followed by hulk hogan worth 25 million dollars <laughs> well hogan's goes back and forth remember he <laughs> at one point I, I had more money than rick flair and hulk hogan put together and then the worm turned and he won the lawsuit, but he loses his money in divorce things and he gets money back in lawsuits and blah, blah, blah. So I'm, I'm not surprised at that. But again, we don't know how legitimate these figures are. Well, some interesting ones I'll pick out on here. The Bella Twins are at number eight, worth $20 million. Oh, now that's a fucking insult, whether it's truth, false, or in the middle. Seriously? What the fuck? How the fuck did they make that much money out of the what their contribution to the wrestling business was? Well, right on their heels is Chris Jericho at number nine, worth eighteen million dollars. And uh, again, I don't know about if I if I had eighteen million dollars, I wouldn't be on any tell. I don't I, I don't have eighteen million dollars, and I'm still not on anybody's television by choice. If if Chris Jericho is worth eighteen million dollars, why is he fucking? on TV right now, bumping, that is. But I would I would buy that more than the Bellas because he's been in the business for years and years as a main event star. But they got a TV show. Do you think they made that money, that much money off of a bad reality show? A bad reality show that ran on a network of bad reality shows for multiple seasons? I'm sure they've made some nice Good money on God. it. You know what? People will fucking watch anything. 
Uh, speaking of which, here's an interesting one. Number 15, Jeff Jarrett, worth $15 million. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> again, and I'm friends with Jeff, <laughs> and I'm not saying that he doesn't have $15 million. And he has run a number of companies, and he's been in the business for a while. But if he has $15 million, then how much money does The Undertaker or Randy Orton have when they have been worked for the biggest promotion in the world at a high level in main event matches for 20 fucking years? Well, The Undertaker's actually at number 11 with $17 million. So he's done better oh, well, than Jeff Jarrett, enough. just slightly right. better. Just slightly. You know, it's too bad... <laughs> It's too bad. Jim. I, do, I don't see. I, I, I don't see any of this. I'm sorry. I was going to say it's too bad you couldn't join the most exclusive club in wrestling, the ten million dollar club. Here's who makes ten million dollars, or who has ten million. Well, who's who's to say I haven't? Because I told you my celebrity net worth was off. Well, maybe you could join this crew. Listen to this crew worth ten million dollars: Sable, Kevin Von Erich, Diamond Dallas Page, David Otunga. And Andre the Giant. What? Well, wait a minute. David, David Otunga? I don't know what he does. Does he have another job besides wrestling? Because Yes, he puts what? lists up of celebrity wealth on websites. <laughs> no, I don't know what he does. Um, I mean, Kevin Von Erich, Fritz had money, and Kevin was the last child. Um, and he did sell the world class library to Vince for seven figures, and that's why they all moved out to Hawaii. But oh. I don't, I don't know about that one. And uh, David Otunga didn't make it in the wrestling business. I mean, he does he do something else as a as a livelihood and. Because we haven't seen him in ages, but they don't cut him because he's related to somebody, right? I don't think he was married. I think he was engaged to Jennifer Hudson for a while. But I don't think that's still a thing. Or well, then is he still there? I have no idea. Then how the fuck did he get $10 million? Maybe he's the smartest man in wrestling. <laughs> Maybe he beat Andre the Giant, who also had $10 million. Oh, and, you know, I... I no... No, no. I'm not saying Andre didn't make $10 million over the course of his career, although we ought to do some math on that, because back Andre was in the Guinness Book of World Records in, what was it, 1974, 75, 76, in that area, as the highest-paid pro wrestler at 450-something, or 400-something thousand dollars. I don't mean 400-something thousand dollars which would today be, what, two or three million. He was just above Bruno and just above the NWA champion. And I don't, I mean, he's been dead for, they're obviously talking about his estate. Would the value of his estate be that much when we've seen the recent documentaries and there's not tons of money pouring into it, although there is still interest in Andre. I'm not trying to be unkind. Yeah. I don't see I don't see how that would have worked since he's been gone for almost 30 years now. Yeah, I don't think there's millions pouring in, but it's, it is interesting because I guess it's Andre's daughter and whoever she has on her team. They license Andre the Giant all over the place. So I actually collect Andre the Giant action figures in the boxes, because that's so cool to me. You can get all these different brands of Andre the Giant toys. The official WWE. There's a Mego one that's just the most ghastly figure you've ever seen. <laughs> Super 7 does different versions of it. There's Japanese action figures. There's so many cool Andre the Giant items, and a lot of it's because outside of WWE, he's being licensed actively. I don't know how many wrestlers there are. I mean, Randy Savage, I guess. How many wrestlers have passed and actually have estates that are still monetizing the wrestler in any acceptable way of the way a celebrity who passed would be? Not many. Not that I can think of. Well, we'll close out this list, Jim, with the $7 million club. <laughs> Jeff Hardy, Dean Ambrose. Okay, maybe that's when this list was made. Randy Orton. 
Wade Barrett, Jerry Lawler, and Bret Hart. I, again, you know, I, ca I can't argue with names like Lawler and Bret Hart, except say maybe would it be a little bit more um, with some of those others? I don't know how they arrived there, but I think the the reporting on this is specious at best because there's no way to tell how the in, unless somebody is in a high profile lawsuit where that information has to become public record, there's no way of telling what anybody's legitimate net worth is. What wrestler had the most opulent lifestyle, you know, pre uh, the modern television era or pre, you know, the, the eighties before the eighties, what wrestler, because the thing is when you're talking about the way the email was worded was the richest wrestlers of all time, not the richest wrestlers of this era. So yeah. again, when you're adjusting for inflation, how many wrestlers in the twenties, thirties, how many wrestlers throughout time really lived it up and made a lot of money and actually saved some money and we don't even realize it? Well, the stories always were that Strangler Lewis, who was married five or six times and went through, Thez said he went through two or three different fortunes during his career. He probably earned, and this is in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, several million dollars wrestling and ended up pretty broke at the end. I mean... <laughs> Flair certainly lived a high lifestyle. The stories are from, from Vince McMahon himself that that's why he idolized Dr. Jerry Graham because Jerry Graham, when he was on top in the late 50s in New York and the Graham brothers were selling out Madison Square Garden, he had the bright pink convertible Cadillac that he would drive through Times Square lighting cigars with $100 bills. And that's $100 in 1959. And th those were the stories, and he did it because there it was. And then he died broke and penniless, you know, in a fucking cheap room somewhere after his mother, who he had supported all throughout his wrestling career, sending money home that he wasn't burning light and cigars. She ended up giving all the money to the fucking church. And to Billy Graham, was, to the Reverend Billy Graham. To the Reverend Billy Graham. And he, the Jerry Graham was left high and dry, and there you go. So, but I mean, Barnett lived opulently in a lot of cases off of other people's money, but. I was going to say, but there's arguments to this day whether he actually had any money at all. Yeah. But it just, you know, appearances were deceiving, and a lot of to Ole Anderson had fuck you money in the early 80s. And that's why it was uh, an increasingly bigger task to get him to come back for Crockett and then for TBS. And then, you know, finally he's like, fuck this wrestling shit. But it wanted, he had a lumber mill in Minnesota that he owned. And, uh, you know, he was always, because he was one of the smarter guys in the business intelligence-wise. He always took care of his shit.